I'm going to walk you through how to actually use the SharePoint form web part. This example is just a simple vacation request form. The SharePoint form web part is just that. It's a web part. It's thin. I can drop it on a SharePoint page just like any other web part and then configure it. First of all, you see, I already have the form on this page and I configured it the way I needed it configured. A couple things to point out real quick. It is 508 compliant. It ships that way. And it's also based on HTML forms best practices. You can change the look and feel using CSS, but the word of caution there is you may inadvertently step it out of 508 compliance. So be careful with that stuff. Here's the form. I need to make some modifications to this web part. Now, once I've added it to the page, and I trust you know how to add a web part to a page, you would just edit it just like any other web part. So I'm going to do the drop down and say edit web part. And it brings up the web part properties dialog over here on the right hand side. The very first thing we see under the expanded smart form list configuration is the select a target list. So you drop that down and you point it to the list that you want. And when you point it to that list, now for this example, I'm using a list called Vacation Calendar. It's a simple SharePoint calendar. It's out of the box calendar. I've added some more fields to it. And it's just right over here, Vacation Calendar. So I pointed it to that list. And when I point it to that list, a couple things happen. One is all of the fields show up for that list that's in that list. The second thing that happens is you see how these are grayed out? I can't select or unselect these fields. It's because they are required fields. It's going to honor the SharePoint list settings. So in other words, if there's a required field in this list, then you're not going to be able to uncheck it over here. We prevent our users from inadvertently shooting themselves in the foot that way with their forms. Now, if there's a case where you need to make this not required and you don't want this particular field to show up on your form, it's pretty simple. You go to your list and you tell it, that field is not required. If I want to display location, I just put a check there and then I place checks in all the fields that I want and uncheck all the fields that I don't want. Next, we have allow attachments if enabled. So if I put a check in allow attachments if enabled, it's going to display a little browse button. We've all seen those where if you want your end users to be able to also attach a file with their form submission, no problem place a check there, and then another field's going to be built into this form for you that says browse, and they can browse their local machine and move forward. Now, one thing you might be wondering is the order of all of these things. The, all these fields that's on the form, what controls the order? How do you get to control that order? So again, if SharePoint already does that, we take advantage of that. SharePoint does do that already. You can go to any of your lists and control the column ordering from the list it, itself. So you would go to this list, go into list settings and specify the column order. Once you do that, the SharePoint form web part is going to honor that order and display these fields appropriately. Scrolling down, the last option under this is display field descriptions. So you see I'm displaying that right here for this example. Um, and this is how that works. SharePoint lists allow you to have a, a, a column description. So you would go to your list, fill out your descriptions. If you want to display those, you place a check right in that box. Scrolling down a little bit more, let's get into the smart form title. Now this is different than the web part title. The web part title, if I scroll up, you'll see is right here, smart form standard web part. The smart form title is different. It is being displayed right here. It's presented better. The, the treatment of the display is more elegant, but it also gives you a pretty nice capability here to put in hyperlinks if you want, because it does support HTML tags. So a lot of our customers will have uh, a form title in here that makes sense for their end users with like maybe a little help button that's a hyperlink to some page someplace else. Let's expand the smart form submit options. So. Now we're getting into some more of the sophisticated capabilities of the SharePoint form web part. So starting at the top here is submit URL fields. What you can do is any of these fields can be passed on to your landing page. So down here you see, and we haven't gotten there yet, but you can specify the landing page. So in other words, when a user comes here and fills out this form and clicks submit, where do they go then? And SharePoint out of the box, they're usually landed on the list and they get to see everything that everyone else has submitted. And this gives you the ability to provide a tailored 
landing page and move them along the way wherever they need to go, okay? So you could specify your landing page. The submit URL fields gives you more advanced capabilities. You can pass these values to your landing page. These landing pages don't even have to be SharePoint pages. They can be PHP, whatever URL you paste in here, that's where it's going to route the user to. And it's also going to pass these parameters to that landing page because it does that up in the query string so that if the page has been configured in some way to do something with query string parameters, it can do it then. So it, it's not a magic bullet. Uh, it's not going to automatically make your landing page do great things with, with these variables, but it's going to hold up its end of the bargain and pass this information onto your landing page. So again, it's one of those things that's it's pretty helpful if you need it. Submit button type. You have three options here. So you can have a regular button, an HTML form button. We've all seen those. Link text, which is just whatever text you type in right here, it'll display as link text. So if I were to type in submit, that's going to be displayed right here instead of what I'm doing here. What I am doing here happens to be an image URL because I wanted to use a snappy looking submit button for my form to make it look a little nicer. And this might be a submit button that I'm using across the board to keep all my forms consistent. So if that's the case, I select image URL and I paste in the location, just the URL, where is my image. And in my case, I'm using one called submit. PNG, and I just pasted in the URL to that. Now, scrolling down a little bit more, we have the thank you text. I mentioned earlier, when a user clicks submit, they can go to a landing page. That's great for probably about 50% of the forms, but, but the other half, you may have a need for repetitive data entry tasks. So in other words, I might have an intern or somebody that is going to need to submit a couple things at a time, every time. So in that case, it might be a better option just to display a confirmation message at the top of the form after it blanks it back out. So in other words, I could type in success. Please enter next item. And that would be displayed on top right up here after the user clicks the submit button. And in that case, they would not be routed to a landing page. And so I already walked you through what the landing page is, and I just made a, a page in SharePoint that's specific, that makes sense for this form, and I pasted in the URL here. So hopefully that makes sense so far. The next option is going to be the Smart Form Cancel option. So let me expand that and walk you through. The smart form cancel options are nearly identical to your smart form submit options. However, there's a couple things to point out. One is you still can use a button, link text, or image URL, but also for my example, I just don't even show it and I select do not show the cancel button. The landing page URL. This is a special cancel page landing page URL. So in other words, I have when someone clicks submit, I have a landing page for them to go to. But if someone hits cancel, they may go to a different landing page. And if I wanted them to do that, I would paste in the URL here. Now let's expand the smart form style options. And this is the last thing we're going to need to go through here. This is the CSS that controls the look and feel of your form. Now, as a best practice, we really encourage you to use a link to the CSS file. And in that way, this CSS file can be used by multiple forms across your entire enterprise. It, it would preserve a consistent look and feel across your enterprise. Now, you can use as many different CSS files as you wish. Maybe you have a total of five CSS files that all of your forms that can use one of those five, or you can use one for all. I'm completely up to you. But the way it ships, is we give you a CSS file that's based off of HTML Forms best practices as well as being 508 compliant. What most of our customers do is they just get it and they, they modify it a little bit, tweak it to, to meet their specific needs. 
and move on. The CSS is also built right into this web part itself. So if you do completely trash your CSS file or you need to start over, no problem. It's always built into the web part and you'll probably realistically always have a copy of this that, that shipped with the product. Now, the interesting thing here with our CSS files is our customers uh, started sharing these with each other. It's like a community around the styling the forms. We have a pool of CSS files now that our customers get to, to start out with and but anyway, that's the walkthrough, guys. It, it's rapid deployment of your SharePoint forms. And so for this example, that's how I would configure the SharePoint form web part. Now, once I get it configured, I'll conclude this by kind of showing you the logic of how all of this comes together to form the full vacation request form solution. Let's just hit save and close. So I've got my list to hold the data. Using the SharePoint form web part, I now have a real easy way to build this form to capture the data and route my user where they need to, to go. Now, other than that, I just have some very simple workflow, SharePoint workflow on this list, this vacation calendar list that does a couple things. When a new request comes in, it assigns a task to the supervisor to review and approve this vacation request. Meanwhile, it also shoots an email to the person filling out this form telling them, hey, you have successfully submitted a vacation request and it has been assigned to, it's actually a variable, your supervisor right here for review. You can expect to hear back the status of this request within um, two business days, three business days, whatever your process is. But let's go ahead and fill out this form and I can show you how it works. So Brad Sutton is a supervisor. Bob Smith is who we're filling out this form to request vacation. Now I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And as expected, it landed me on the landing page. Meanwhile, what happened was the data actually came to this vacation calendar list. I mentioned we have workflow on this list, very simple workflow. And so what the workflow did was it fired off an email, as I described earlier, but it also created a task. And if I go over into this task list, you'll see here's the task. And I'm already signed in as Brad. So I could actually click on that. And I'll say, OK, complete the task. It could be done now. If we go over to the vacation calendar itself, it's showing me all of the, the requests in this view that have actually been not only submitted and reviewed, but also approved. So it's kind of serving double duty. One is anybody throughout the organization can come here and see, oh, a real quick way of seeing who's in and who's out. But furthermore, there's an entire business process that's been automated very easily just using simple SharePoint workflow and a out-of-the-box SharePoint calendar, as well as the one missing ingredient to all this to make it really easy to build without any kind of coding whatsoever is the SharePoint form web part, the actual interface to capture this data and move it on. So I hope this example makes sense and I'm going to plan on uh, doing more examples for different real world kind of uh, examples as well. So stay tuned to see some of those as well.